everyone, welcome back to Herky the Cavalier's channel. I have a very special guest with me today. This is Dr. Michelle Dulake. Hello. And she's been a one of Herky's friends for the longest time. I think we first connected like back in 2014 yes, on Instagram. Yes. And Michelle is also the CEO of Fera Pets Organics. And if you've been following us for a while, you know we've mentioned some of her products before. So this is the woman behind uh, the brand. <laughs> so we're very excited to have her on today. And I did announce that she was coming on our channel to discuss everything Cavalier Health. So I asked you all to submit some questions. So we're going to go over all of that today and discuss it with her because she is a vet. So I think she knows a lot of things <laughs> that maybe we don't. So it'll be great to see what she has to say. So Michelle, why don't you tell us more about you and Pippa and like how she came in your life and everything? Yeah, of course. So I have been a veterinarian for about five years and I got Pippa about four years ago. She actually was a wedding gift um, from one of my vet friends because I always wanted a Cavalier and I actually love anything heart related to so I've always loved them because I saw a lot of patients come through that were Cavaliers. They're just the best dog. So oh, I couldn't well, agree. So I well couldn't behaved, agree. Yep. so Ooh. loving, <laughs> so great with every type of person. Yeah, and so then also I started Farrah Pet Organics about two years ago with one of my childhood friends just because we saw a gap in the supplement market for more holistic and organic ingredients. So we just started our own pet supplement company and I just wanted to make sure that all the dosing was correct. Like, yeah. you know, because I feel like a lot of supplements out there they're not the correct amount right. and they're not as, they don't work as well. Oh, <laughs> <I'm so sad. laughs> She gets hot really easily. All oh, right. She's a little overweight, which we will get to. And we'll talk about obesity and cavaliers because that's a thing. <laughs> Do you feel like your background as a vet helped you with developing products for Farah? Of course. Okay. So the fact that I have all these resources to the correct dosing, mm -hmm. that was my main thing because even now we're formulating a product for cardiac health and mm -hmm. I've been trying to find products that have the right amount of like taurine yep. or L-carnitine, things like that. And they just, they're so low. So mm -hmm. they, I just don't know how effective they are. So right. my job is to make sure that they're getting the right amount and the best ingredients that they can for our dog so that they can have better health in general for every organ. Like, that's my goal. That's really amazing because I personally love brands that start out, you know, you're a pet owner, you're a cab owner, and your mission basically is to bridge a gap for yeah. something and you know that she already loves her cavalier and everything so i trust your company and <laughs> i trust her products just because her love started with her cavalier so yeah. we have something we can relate to yeah yeah let's just start with some questions andy can you help us please Pippa, come here come back so s suri says my question is what is the best kind of food that you could give to a cavalier i know that raw food is considered as the best but my cavalier is lazy she sleeps all day and I'm afraid it would be too much. Recommending diets can be a little controversial because there's so many different opinions out there. As a vet, all I can do is recommend a nutritionally balanced and complete diet for your pet. Mm -hmm. So the things that I look for on kibble bags, if you are feeding kibble, is it should say formulated and approved by AFCO. And it's even better if it says tested also because then you know that it's tested and your dog is actually getting the completely balanced meal versus if it's not tested, you don't know after it's processed and everything like that, that it's actually getting the nutrients to your dog. So that's one thing that I always look for. Another thing to look for on the bags is if it says for supplemental feeding or intermittent feeding, right. that is actually not a complete, complete yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. So it's either a topper or a, a treat or something yeah. like that. If you're going to do a home cooked diet, which some people would like to do just because you can choose the ingredients, they're organic or whatever you want to do, I would always recommend that you meet with a veterinary nutritionist to make sure that it's complete because we see it all the time where diets are just very imbalanced and so they have nutritional deficiencies and then they can have secondary problems to that. So if you're going to do a home cooked diet, then make sure that it is balanced and approved by a veterinarian. Raw diets, I'm going to not recommend that just because as a vet, I actually can't recommend that because the FDA and the ABMA, they all don't approve raw diets just because of safety, health reasons, and people not preparing it properly and actually humans getting sick. And I've actually seen cases of dogs where they will come on with bloody diarrhea, mm -hmm. vomiting, and I've had dogs actually die because they were given raw food diets and the 
it was they were just contaminated with bacteria. Right. People still feed it, mm -hmm. and you know that's great. That's their own thing. All I ask is that it's nutritionally balanced and complete so that your dog doesn't have any nutritional deficiencies. That's a really good tip actually to give because everybody is going to end up feeding their dog whatever, whatever they want. Yes. So yeah, as long as it's balanced, I think that's a really good guideline. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you with like home cooked meals and even raw, raw home cooked meals when yes. everybody just puts whatever they think is okay. Yeah. Usually it's going to be deficient of like certain vitamins. Right. One disease that we're seeing more in, in veterinary medicine is something called dilated cardiomyopathy, DCM. And it's usually seen in larger breed dogs, but more recently we've been seeing it in smaller breed dogs too, like schnauzers, bulldog frenchies, things like that. So Do we see it in cavalier too. It hasn't been reported in okay. cavaliers, but it can probably happen to, mm -hmm. to them because they're linking it more to grain-free diets, okay. which is kind of crazy because grain-free was this huge fad like mm -hmm. for a couple years mm -hmm. and the fact that they're now linking it to DCM and once they change the diet, it actually gets better. Like that's kind of scary that, you know, those grain-free diets mm -hmm. are out there and causing it. The FDA is still looking into it and they're doing investigations yeah. and working with cardiologists. So another thing that causes DCM is taurine deficiency, which was huge with cats, but now they give taurine as a supplement and dogs are even getting taurine as a supplement. So for cardiac health, that is a huge supplement that is recommended mm -hmm. and Farrah Petroganis is going to come out with one because Very I good. want to make my own to make sure that it is the best cardiac supplement for all dogs out there. Yeah, so yeah. we're formulating that now, but that's just examples of diets that are unbalanced and can cause disease secondary to these deficiencies. And what is DCM actually? Like uh, what oh, so dilated cardiomyopathy is basically where the walls become very thin and weak and they're not able to pump blood properly and then the, the heart becomes very large. So it will look huge on x-ray okay. and eventually, you know, it can, it can lead to, to death, unfortunately. Is that so, um, what leads to like heart failure? Is yeah, so it's heart okay. failure and mm -hmm. then, yeah. That's some very serious stuff. Yeah, it, it is very serious. So that's why, you know, diets are, it's, it's important to really look and see what it says on the label and things like that. I mean, there are really good home cooked meals that you can buy, like just food for dogs. It's, yeah. it's, it's right there. Yes, it's <laughs> right. It's right around okay. here and it's formulated by a veterinarian and okay. they've done AFCO testing. Okay. So that's like a good example of home cooked meals. It is very expensive, okay. but any home cooked meal that you're going to, it's sure. time consuming and expensive. Mm -hmm. So on the subject, Nigel Miller asked, I'd like to ask your vet cab mom friend um, whether she has ever come across any cavaliers without heart conditions and how common are spinal problems? Uh, Syringomyelia? I can't pronounce this. <laughs> it's okay, syringomyelia. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we all know that heart disease is huge in cavaliers. The majority of cavaliers will get a heart murmur by six years old, yeah. um, and majority of them, if they have not passed away already, would pr probably die from heart, congestive heart failure by 10 years old, or, or, or that's like mm -hmm. the average age. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're always looking into ways to kind of prevent it, but it's really hard to prevent because it is hereditary. It's all genetics. Yes. That's why when you're picking from a breeder, mm -hmm. that's one of the most important things to ask is, are both parents, do they have heart murmurs? Have they been seen by a cardiologist? Do they have papers that they don't have a heart murmur? Like that is one thing that I would truly you know, ask for. But you know, since it's like genetics and you say most cavaliers will get a heart murmur by hard. age six, yeah. usually when they have their first litter, they're not even six. So I know, which it's hard to tell. There's, there's a new um, mitral valve actually protocol for breeders now that okay. they should wait until five or six to actually have their first yeah. litter, which you should ask how old, you know, the dogs yeah. are when they're, when they're breeding. Cause mm -hmm. that's typically when you would kind of know if they have a heart murmur mm -hmm. or not. But yeah, you are, you're right. A lot of dogs are bred they're they're like two, three, three years yeah. old. Yeah, yeah so which it's, it's hard to say. Mitral valve disease is basically an abnormality with the mitral valve. So in your heart, there's four chambers. Um, you know, there's the left side and right side, opposite for you guys, but left side and right mm -hmm. side. And each four chamber has a valve basically that opens and closes. Mm -hmm. The blood flows from one chamber to the next. So it goes from the atrium to the ventricle. Mm -hmm. And when your valve opens and closes, blood should not flow backwards. But as time goes on and they get older, this valve becomes leaky and it degenerates. And so blood flows forward, but because it doesn't close all the way, blood flows backwards and that left atrium becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And then over time, 
once it fills that left atrium, it flows backwards into the lungs and fluid fills up in the lungs, which is called pulmonary edema. And that's actually when it is congestive heart failure, when you have fluid in the lungs. And that's blood in the lungs, basically. It's, it's um, no, it's just the extra excess, like, fluid. It's not blood. It's okay. excess fluid that overflows from the capillaries. So okay. it's not, it's not blood. They basically have trouble breathing, less stamina. They're just overall just not doing well. Mm -hmm. They sometimes stop eating, coughing, mm -hmm. things like that. Sometimes they faint. Is it a condition that could be controlled, like... Yes. Managed. Yeah. So majority of the time now, what happens uh, for treatment, if your dog gets diagnosed with a, a heart murmur and heart murmurs are graded one to six, six mm -hmm. being the loudest. Usually when a heart murmur is three to four, that's when I start to kind of say, okay, we need to really start to manage, manage this. Mm -hmm. We always take an x-ray to see how big the heart is first. If it's enlarged or it looks like they could be going into heart failure soon, we start them on a medication called pemobendin. Mm -hmm. um, that basically helps the heart contract and keeps the blood moving forward. Mm -hmm. If and when they do go into congestive heart failure, then you start them on other medications, mainly being Lasix, which is mm -hmm. also known as furosemide. That is a diuretic and that basically helps get rid of the excess fluid that's okay. in their lungs. Yeah, and yeah. so they tend to pee more and then they drink more to compensate for that. So mm -hmm. you see a lot of peeing and drinking water with that. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is an ACE inhibitor, which is called enalapril. And that basically lowers the blood pressure for the blood to leave the heart. So it's not as hard for the blood to leave the heart. So it lowers the, the pressure. In and can they be like on those medications for like years? Years, they can be on it for years. Okay. You do need to check kidney values mm -hmm. in the blood because they tend to elevate the kidney values right. and then that becomes an issue. If your dog has kidney issues along with heart failure, then it becomes tricky because the uh, treatment for those is the opposite. For heart failure, you don't want to overload with fluids. For kidney disease, you do want to give fluids. So oh, it's, wow. it becomes a balancing game of how comfortable is your dog and that's the dose that we will keep your dog on until, you know, yeah. it's too late. Wow, very it's interesting. It's a lot of information. It and is. And there is actually a new surgery. It's not really new, but there's a surgery for fixing mitral valve really? disease okay. in Europe. They do it in France and Japan. And there's a surgeon. I think I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a surgeon that does it. It does cost like $50,000 to do it, but he does it successfully. Like he has a 90% success rate and they fix the mitral valves and then they don't have... Do you think anymore. that could ever come to the U.S.? Or I'm really hoping so. I think cardio like U.S. cardiologists are looking into it and they're really mm -hmm. trying to learn it um mm -hmm. but it's gonna take some time you okay. know for them to do that but like, that's good news that it, there's like progress and stuff and that we i just could see some improvement i just hope that it's cheaper because that's so expensive. oh for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty thousand. i don't even think anybody can afford that like i, know. I wonder if even With um, the insurance company. insurance do you think they would cover it? Unlikely, right? I've heard that only one or two of them would cover it. Okay. I, I, but I'm sure as time goes on and it becomes cheaper, that yeah. they will probably cover it. There is hope, people. There is hope. <laughs> so part two of Nigel's question was... Uh... Syringomyelia. Okay. So syringomyelia is basically when in Cavaliers, unfortunately, their brain is too big for their skull. That's just kind of a known thing. So their brain is really smushed in their skull and sometimes the cerebral spinal fluid, it should basically be leaving the skull and going into the spinal cord. But there's so much pressure that it starts to make fluid filled cavities around the spinal cord. And so that leads to syringal myelia. The only way to see it is through an MRI, but usually what it looks like clinically is they'll look like they have an ear infection. They'll start scratching at their at their neck or their head but they actually won't even touch their head or neck it just to them feels like pins and needles and it's very painful you know what's really funny about sm is that the symptoms for sm looks like normal dog behavior totally and like i get freaked out all the time because we know so many cavaliers that have it yeah and so every time they scratch i'm like oh my god they have sm i know like, i know it's so scary and because cavaliers do get ear infections quite often that it, sometimes you just like don't know yeah. so i mean i think it will come across as very very painful like they Cry, yell crying and yeah, yelping yeah. yeah the scratching thing is very confusing though because it can also look like that with ear infection it can also look like that with pisum or glue ear which is another thing that i don't know about that get. i don't know so <laughs> another thing that cavaliers get is it's called a pisum but it's primary secretory otitis media and that's basically where there's a lot of mucus buildup in the middle ear and so 
and it makes the tympanic membrane bulge. But it also looks like syringomyelia because they're scratching at their ear. So it's all very confusing. And the only way to diagnose that is really an MRI. So, okay. but treatment for PSOM mm -hmm. is actually called a myringotomy, where they make a hole in the tympanic membrane and they clean it out and then they give steroids and antibiotics and it okay. usually goes away. Mm -hmm. Syringomyelia's treatment is you it's know, really invasive. We just met up with another cavalier that she just had the surgery for her yeah. She had like the entire thing like shaved and so invasive. They literally crack open her skull to yeah. like do stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right? Basically to make more room. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they have to, it's basically making more room for spinal fluid to flow back and forth mm -hmm. normally without the pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different techniques, but yeah, that's very invasive and very expensive. Mm -hmm. Other things, I, I've had other cases where they just kind of live with it and they give like pain medication mm -hmm. and things like it's not that bad. Okay. So Instagram Island it really sucks. And that's again, it's hereditary. So yeah. there's not much you can there's do. Like, I feel like that. this breed has so many issues that, do. that are really painful and yeah. like difficult to manage. Yeah. I have to put my dog on heart medication with a grade three heart murmur. And is Vetamin a good tablet to be on? Yes, so that's the Pimobendin, Vetmedin, it's okay. the same thing. So I usually start them on Pimobendin when they have moderate to severe mitral regurg, or it looks like they may be going into heart failure within the next six months to a year because mm -hmm. um, it does help prolong the onset of congestive heart failure. Okay. So that's an excellent drug to get on. As yeah. long as your vet you know, recommends it, they know. So. Maria Learning says, question for the calf mom vet. I've heard from several, from several that you should prolong uterine calves. Oh, I'm about to have a boy and wonder how long I should wait to have him neutered. And uh, I'm not planning to breed, so should I wait a year or more? Okay, so spaying and neutering is also a pretty controversial mm -hmm. topic right yeah. now. In my practice for boys, so I recommend neutering anytime between the being one year old and two year old, just because there's more pros for boys to, to get to prolong, to, it. To prolong mm -hmm. it and not as much downside. For girls, I mean, they're gonna basically have their period. They're gonna have their heat, which is can be, you know, kind of annoying for some mm -hmm. owners. Mm -hmm. The fact that they could get pregnant is also, you know, it's just hard being a girl. Hard being a girl. <laughs> it's very hard being a girl. You know, periods, pregnancies. It is. <laughs> but it's like um, a dog. I know. Too. I know. If you let females have their first heat, it increases mammary cancer chances every time they have a heat. So we always recommend, you know, spaying them before their first heat, mm -hmm. which is usually around six months. So what's the advantage for the males to actually prolong? So the disadvantages of spaying and neutering is that their growth plates actually close slower. Okay. Um, so dogs who are not neutered before the age of one or one and a half, they actually are taller because their bones actually grow longer. So, you know, it is estrogen, testosterone, they do help with growth overall. So mm -hmm. I do understand why people want to, you especially know, especially the males, like especially want. the males. There's been a report with, I believe, golden retrievers mm -hmm. that, who they've seen more risk of uh, having cruciate tears in their knees if they are neutered early. And that probably has to do with bones not being as long and having some differences with the angle really? and like they okay. can tear their... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, I, I like to neuter males, you know, after they're more full grown. Okay. With females, it's one heat is... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be too worried mm -hmm. if you let them have one heat, mm -hmm. but I would definitely spay them after the first heat because mm -hmm. every time it goes up like my 10% of them getting mammary cancer. And you know, it's hard because people are saying, oh, if you if you don't spare neuter, then there's decreased chances of them getting cancer or, you know, the hemangiosarcoma, osteosarcoma, all these things. But dogs live longer if you spare and neuter them. Mm -hmm. So you're, you are likely to see these cancerous things because they're living longer. So it's either you spay and neuter them and they live longer and then they get cancer or you don't spay and neuter them and then they, get they die of other, other reasons prior. A lot of the times males, they are roaming and so they get hit by cars. They're trying to find females to, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. get busy with them. And so they get lost. They get, you know, there's a lot of trauma deaths. Mm -hmm. um, so there's different reasons for, you know, why you should, why you shouldn't, it, the list is endless, but I personally recommend staying around six months for and females. for females and then neutering any time between one and two years of age. Okay, a question in French. Isabelle Bouc, salut les filles, ma question serait, 
Quel produit pour nettoyer les yeux et les traces rouges? Bisous, Herky et Milton. So, she's asking, what product would you recommend for tear stains? And like the red stain and, yeah. and like the smell and everything. Which is actually a question super relevant to us. That's so relevant. Milton stinks from the tears so much, but yeah. not Herky. Okay, so this is kind of also controversial because if your dog has runny eyes mm -hmm. and it's cavalier, which majority of you watching, that's your dog, mm -hmm. that's normal for cavaliers. Mm -hmm. So like Pippa had it like terrible for the first year and I just like kept wiping it and wiping Same. it. And her kitchen was really bad. Away. It went away, yeah. And so it's not abnormal for cavaliers to have this issue. The only thing that will get rid of it is if you put your dog on antibiotics. Yep. For example, like Tylen, which is also known as Tylosin. That you don't want to put your dog on a long-term antibiotic Same. because yep, it's that. So in my opinion, you just wipe your dog's eyes every day. And, and I know it's not and you it. just live with it yeah. because it might go away eventually. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, then you just kind of live with it. As long as it's not getting gunky, you're not seeing any green discharge or yellow discharge. Is this is normal. Okay. This is normal, yeah. So you're I normal, baby. Yeah. You were so worried. You were so stinky and yes. gross. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I won't worry about that. Michelle Viano asked, I'm getting my first time with her King Charles in a few months. Can't wait. Can you ask your vet guests what supplements you should give your cavalier daily, weekly, etc.? Oh, okay. this very is interesting. A good question. Now ready for this. This is a good question. <laughs> so, supplements that I recommend, especially for cavaliers, fish oil is the number one supplement that I recommend because it has so many benefits for skin, for their heart. So, I think you just gave us a big bottle of fish oil as well, right? Yes, I did. This is. Fair Pet Organics fish oil. It is made from all small fish. It's not made from salmon oil. It's and what's the difference? Why do you use like small fish instead of Because big? they have a higher percentage of EPA and DHA in a smaller amount. It's okay. more sustainable for the environment also. Great. And it's just a higher quality fish actually. Our um, fish oil has the highest quantity of EPA and DHA in each teaspoon. We have 900 milligrams and 600 milligrams in each teaspoon which is the highest on the market and I made sure that it was the best and we also have vitamin E in our fish oil because as fish oil over time it can cause um, oxidation in the, your dog's body and so vitamin E is a great antioxidant that helps you know with free radicals in the body so it's always important to give vitamin E with fish oil too mm -hmm. um, and it tastes great they love it they love it so much like yeah. we, we put that over their food like one pump per day and yeah. they absolutely love it it too. comes with a pump which you put in and so it's really easy to administer you just put it in their food the other supplements that I recommend for Cavaliers is um, a heart you know, supplement, which basically should have taurine in it, L-carnitine, vitamin E should be in it. Um, so those are mainly the two the two supplements that are the most important. And you're coming um, out with that. And too. we are coming out with that, but it will probably be the end of this year. Okay. And then the other supplement is a probiotic. I always recommend probiotics for dogs just because it helps with their GI, their their healthy gut, um, all the flora in their gut. It helps ha keep keep being their poops good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have seen it help with teary eyes. Mm -hmm. We actually have a probiotic also. Ours is for dogs and cats. It has 11 strains in it and it has 5 billion CFUs per scoop, which is a really high amount also. So this is really good. It's a powder. You just put it on their food. So can um, you add the fish oil and the probiotics yes. in the same bowl? Yep. Yep. Oh, that's perfect. I would, I would do, yep. I would do both. Herky, come so on. should be given daily? All of these? Everything should be given daily. Mm. Yep. You can take breaks here and there, but everything should be given long term. And what's the other supplement that you have? The that other supplement that we have, which you know, is wonderful. Um, it's a lot of bigger dogs use it just because they get more joint issues, but of cav course, cavaliers yeah. have patella issues, they have hip issues, so the joint supplement is very good. It has glucosamine in it, chondroitin, MSM, and then we had added some natural organic ingredients like organic turmeric, green lip muscle, which has lots of glucosamine in it already, and organic turmeric is an anti has lots of anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. properties, mm -hmm. um, so those two things are in it. And it's a soft chew, which a lot of dogs really love, and it's super easy to give. It's bite size like that. Pippa, Pippa come on, up. Come here, Herky. Can you sit? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. Want one? Oh. <laughs> and and oh, they love it. And your lady. And they love it. <laughs> Does Milton want one? Of course he wants one. Yes. Okay. 
this. They love it. But you can only, they think it's a treat, but you can only give like two max a day. Before we had your oil, actually, we, we would once in a while get the human fish oil thing. Right, right. And just cut it up and yeah, put it on yeah. their food. Sometimes we give them like a fish based food. Okay. Because we heard like it's really good for the yeah, skin and yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, having like a lot of fish in the food can sort yes, of, sort I think of that, yeah, yeah. I think that that is you know that works well too. It doesn't have as much mm -hmm. of the omega threes in a diet as a supplement would, but it's still great to have. Is there a, like one sort of protein that you really recommend or that you like more than others? No, you know, I just think it depends on whatever your dog likes mm -hmm. and doesn't have any issues with, like any skin reactions mm -hmm. or, you know, any GI upset. Mm -hmm. I think that it's fine as long as, you know, your dog likes it. And, it, and it, yeah, it's, if it's working for you, just continue doing it. Perfect. The only other supplement that I would say is a lot of cavaliers actually get UTIs. I don't know if they, they've had UTIs yet. Okay, so Pippa's actually Pippa? had, yeah, she's had oh. some UTIs. So a cranberry supplement would be really good for, for that too, which we're also coming out with next year. Oh my God, what yes, we're coming doing? out. I know, You're killing the game. Cavalier. I know, okay. we're basically making supplements for cavaliers. That's <laughs> awesome, guys. Sarah Pet is just gonna kill the game. <laughs> Trying the to just fill in the gaps. You and know? the next thing you should do is something for the tears. I know. I will. I will. Yeah. Well, the probiotics is, is supposed to help with that, but I know the only the only thing that actually works for sure is antibiotics. So we'll try. I'm still not down for that. Like, I know. Some people we'll tell try. me they're on like antibiotics. I'm like, why would you do that? Yeah. So something I wanted to ask you actually is. Herky, if you remember, she had her tooth fractured. Yeah. And I learned only after that Cavaliers have bad teeth. Is that something that you noticed or is it something that's specific to like small breeds? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, small breeds in general, they do have bad teeth just because their teeth are so crammed together. Mm -hmm. And we're not flossing and brushing their teeth as well you know, as we do to yeah. our own teeth. So they're going to have dental disease. Mm -hmm. About the tooth being fractured, I, n I always tell owners, if you cannot stick your nail in there and make an indent, do not give it to your dog. Because it's if it's too hard for your nail, it's too hard for their teeth, mm -hmm. and they're going to crack a tooth, you know, eventually. And so, you know, all the really hard nylon bones or antlers or whatever, I would refrain from them, especially for these types of dogs. Their teeth are really sensitive. They're not as strong as like, you know, big labs and things mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. I would be very careful with that. Give them softer, chewy, you know, toys or the plush toys that's good for them to play with. I have a lot of these comments too. Like people say, my dog, my cavalier destroys everything, like all the toys. What can I give them that's more durable? And then I'm sort of like stuck in a pickle because I'm like, well, you just have to buy new toys. Yeah, time, you right? have to buy new toys. I mean, or you take the risk of giving them something that lasts forever and it's really hard on their teeth and they could potentially, you know, fracture too. So I, I, I mean, just, I've been I there, would just I, say, I wouldn't yeah. recommend. Yeah, like, it's scary really and, you know, and then they lose a tooth and things like that. So yeah. I actually recommend annual dental cleanings on all dogs across the board, just because I, it's more preventative in my mind mm -hmm. to clean their teeth and prevent them from getting any infections and having teeth being pulled in the future. So I, and my dog Pippa, she does have really bad teeth. So mm -hmm. I actually do her every six months. Wow. And her heart is good. As long as their heart is good and their blood work is good, there's nothing to really worry about. Dental cleanings are so routine these days that okay. it's not a problem. And they can detect other things when they go and yes. they look. Yes, yeah. and so when we clean their teeth, you know, we probe the teeth. If there's any um, pockets, then we always x-ray those teeth. We look at the roots, if any teeth need to come out. And, uh, you know, we're very conservative. We don't want to pull teeth, but if the roots look bad, we're going to call you and let you know mm -hmm. that, you know, these teeth need to be these teeth can be pulled. I'm curious, actually, and do you do Pippa's teeth yourself? Yes. yes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's amazing. Yeah. And then basically, you know, people are always scared, like, oh, my dog's going, going under. This, going under, mm -hmm. or are they going to be able to eat with, you know, losing mm -hmm. teeth? They're going to feel so much better after their teeth are cleaned, because if you think about it, an infection in the body is an infection. So if your dog has terrible teeth, it's an infection that your dog's body is trying to fight off continuously. It's like a continuous infection. So their body is like so tired all the time from trying to fight it. So they feel so much better. They have more energy. Yeah. They just seem healthier after you clean their teeth. So I, I just always recommend. If we were brushing the, the, the girl's teeth on a regular basis, do you still recommend that we should do like an annual cleaning? Like does it go that I much think, in the You depth know, if more? you are cleaning them pretty regularly, mm -hmm. your vet will be able to tell you mm -hmm. if it looks like they need a cleaning. Some dogs go two to three years with 
you know, between the, the deep cleaning. So I think that it depends on how well you're cleaning their teeth mm -hmm. and things like that. So yeah, you can ask your vet to look in their mouth. and That's good because yeah. last time we went in for the checkup, the, she said that Hurricane Milton's teeth look great. Oh, good, so good. And they do brush look, their teeth. I just looked and they look great. <laughs> <laughs> so good to have a vet friend. She just comes yeah, yeah. in, she examines Hurricane yeah. Milton. We're like, yes. We're not us even knowing. I know. I know. <laughs> she just goes like, I know, I'm just looking at their teeth. <laughs> They look great. Really they look great. Uh, on the question of it, do you have any insurance companies or recommendations or suggestions that people should be taking insurance? Yeah, in so if you're a Cavalier owner, you should probably get insurance just because there are so many health related things that come up with them mm -hmm. ear infections, UTIs, dental issues, heart issues, knee, mm -hmm. hip oh issues. God. They have a lot of problems. So you just made all uh, the problems. Yes, so I would definitely look into getting health insurance. Every health insurance policy is different. They either cover wellness, they either, or emergencies, mm -hmm. or everything. So you kind of have to look into each company and see what they cover and what the deductible is and things like that. So whatever, um, so something you're comfortable with that fits yeah, your budget, it and that fits, fits your needs. Yes, because they're all, you know, there's True Panion, VPI, or um, Nationwide, mm -hmm. or, you know, Healthy Pot. There's so many. So you just got to look into them and kind of see what fits your budget exactly. And so I have a question about from Leela that says, my Cavalier is a little bit overweight. How can I get her nice and thin again as soon as possible? Okay, so this is a good example of what Cavaliers can look like. You have on the smaller side, you have perfect size and you have obese right here. <laughs> my dog, my obese. dog, I'm doing a terrible job of keeping her at the correct weight but it's also because I have a toddler at home and she throws food on the ground and Pippa loves it. Mm -hmm. So yes, they can gain weight very fast. Like it's shocking. Like it's crazy. It's like crazy. Herky was once fat. If you guys remember, I'll link the Herky weight loss journey video. Also, she was 23 pounds at some point, 23. And now she's 18, which is her ideal weight. That's five. That's so much weight. That's like, she's 28 pounds. Right now. Oh my God. And her ideal weight is like 22. So, okay. So she, she's, she's just like a bigger, the same bigger as Herky to go like, yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's kind of hard to get them to exercise a lot too. I actually don't know the, like what, what you did, but I cut down her food portions yeah. by a little bit and we made the effort to like get her to exercise more. So yeah. we had to go out more, like right, go yeah. more, yeah. walking more. So. I mean, I think that a lot of it is diet, minimizing how much you are giving, treats. Treat. Like if you're trying to make them lose weight, just cut out treats. I mean, that's and pretty much, they'll be fine. They'll be fine, yeah. Um, like the only treats they have is uh, like pure chicken. Like you know those dehydrated chickens? Oh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. all chicken. That's what she gets chicken. too. That's fine. She loves it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like every, I because I give it to her twice a day and mm -hmm. I feel like when already she does that, that, already that's kind of too much. And on top of that, she gets like the food from the toddler and it's just like too much. So I you know to, what I need to cut. Dessert? It's everything. Like really? it's literally fruit, meat, vegetables, which is not bad for her. It's just, she's getting just too many calories in okay. general. You just need to cut down the calories, you know, maybe cut one meal in half just to start mm -hmm. and kind of see. And I always go based off of how are they looking, not how much you're feeding. So if they're looking like they're gaining weight, just cut back on how much you're feeding. If they're looking like they're losing weight, just put more in, in the bowl. So it just really is based off of how they're looking at that time. Because on the label, they always suggest a shirt. So suggestion, portion, yeah. But like go with however your, your dog, dog looks. Because yeah. yeah. with Milton, that's a really good example. She has a hard time keeping the weight on. So she always fluctuates downwards with her weight. Right. So I always have to feed her a bit more. But Herky has a tendency to, to gain. So yeah. they, they eat the same portion, Herky and yeah. Milton. Oh, wow. Yeah. But Milton, we noticed that when she doesn't eat often, she vomits and she yeah. vomits like that yellow bile thing. Mm -hmm. So right now what works for us with Milton is that we feed her four times a day. That's perfect. You yeah. should be feeding more often if they tend to vomit in between meals. Um, meals. And was it like she was vomiting early in the morning? Early morning, yeah. yeah. So now we do it really late at night, her yeah. last meal, and then up until the morning. Some dogs just have more like increased acid in their stomach. And okay. so if you don't feed them more often, the acid just becomes too much. Like it's like acid reflux and things exactly. like that. So mm -hmm. I just tend to f tell people to feed smaller meals more often if, if that's the case. I mean, some, some dogs, you know, they get two meals a day. Some dogs eat four meals a day. So it just depends on the dog. 
So really adjust according to like your dog and metabolism, yeah. like how he or she is reacting. Yeah, yeah. And if you can't feed them more often because you're gone at work, you could try a medication, just Pepsid, just regular Pepsid. For human. It's an antacid for human. Oh, really? And yeah. you can just give that to them once a day. Mm -hmm. So. Are you happy you get to eat four times a day? Yeah. And Herky gets on that bandwagon too. Oh my gosh. Or else it's unfair, you know, yeah, if you just yeah, feed one. Yes. So, Michelle, thank you so much for of coming course. on. This, this was, was fun. a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have more questions and if we have more requests like this, maybe you'll come back yeah. on the channel next time we're in LA. Yes. Next time you're in LA, come back and visit. Oh, of course, you don't need to ask us. I know. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we love you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Behind the scenes. Okay, <laughs> bye. You wanna come join? Come here. Come here.